welcome to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, a basilica honoring the Blessed Mother under the title, the Immaculate Conception. It was under this title that she was declared patroness of the United States. We're happy to welcome today all you who have come here and all those who have tuned in online to be present at the celebration of the Feast of Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help. We're especially delighted to have our brother redemptorist and bishop, our auxiliary bishop, Bruce Lewandowski, to be our presider today, and Father Philip Dabney, a member of the Redemptorist team for evangelization and parish missions, to be our preacher. This year is especially important to us because the Redemptorist province founded the Perpetual Help Center 75 years ago. This 75-year anniversary of the Perpetual Help Center, which began in the Bronx and is now located in Philadelphia at St. Peter's Church. For 75 years, the center has promoted devotion to our mother perpetual help, continuing to fulfill the mandate that Pius IX gave to the Redemptors when he entrusted this beautiful icon to us in 1866. He said to us at the time, make Mary known throughout the world under the title, Our Mother of Perpetual Help. The Perpetual Help Center has played an important role in our fulfilling this mission by encouraging and enabling people to turn to Mary in prayer and to seek her intercession in finding inner peace, healing, reconciliation, comfort, and assistance. The center has also done this by offering opportunity to enroll loved ones, both living and deceased, in special celebrations of the Eucharist. You know, devotion to Mary under the title, Our Mother of Perpetual Help, is one of the most popular devotions in the Catholic world. And so we invite you, those of you who are here and those of you who will come in the future, to come to this altar, this chapel of our Mother Perpetual Help. It's in the upper church to the right of the main altar, and there you will find her waiting for you. Say a prayer to her, for you, for your loved ones, for anyone in need of help. And we ask you to add one Hail Mary for us, Redemptress, for an increase of vocations. In conclusion, we want to thank our host, Monsignor Walter Rossi, the rector of the Basilica, Father Michael Weston, the director of liturgy, Ms. Jacqueline Hayes, the director of communications, and Dr. Peter Latona, the director of music, for facilitating this celebration today. And again, thank all of you for coming. God bless you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Gathered together to give praise, thanks, and glory to God for 75 years of the Perpetual Help Center, it's fitting that we gather in Mary's house. In this basilica, this national shrine that is really the heart of Marian devotion for many people throughout the country and has been for so many years. It's here that we give thanks to our Lord and Savior for giving us a mother who is always ready to help us. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us your own mother Mary, whose wonderful image we venerate, to be our mother, ever ready to help us. Grant, we pray, that we who continually seek her motherly aid may be found worthy to enjoy increasingly the fruit of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Curds and honey he will eat so that he may learn to reject evil and choose good. For before the child learns to reject evil and choose good, the land of those two kings whom you dread shall be deserted. The Lord shall bring upon you and your people and your father's house such days as have not come since Ephraim seceded from Judah, the king of Assyria. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a violent hailstorm. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns. And on its head were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God in his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God, that there she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his anointed. For the accuser of our brothers is cast out, who accuses them before our God, day and night. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, 
and the disciple there whom he loved. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the art world, there is a piece of art known as a triptych, which is a type of Christian art whose primary function was to aid people in their devotion and their prayer. This triptych consisted of three pictures hinged together side by side, and the center picture or panel was the largest and portrayed the main story. And the two side panels added to the story that was being portrayed. Our three scripture readings today form such a triptych. All three panels, stories, passages from scripture, speak to us either indirectly or directly about Mary, the mother of God. The gospel is the central picture and on each of its sides is the wonderful reading from Isaiah and the passage from Revelation. Today we are going to hear how Mary, our mother perpetual help whom we honor today fits into that picture. Let's begin by looking at the first panel that flanks the gospel passage from Isaiah the prophet. Ahaz, the king of Israel, is deeply afraid of two allied armies that are about to attack his city of Jerusalem. So God sends Isaiah the prophet to offer Ahaz a sign any sign he chooses, it can be as high or as low as he wants. And the sign that God is offering is meant to assure Ahaz that God is with him and to convince him to trust in God. But Ahaz responds, I will not tempt the Lord. And he refuses the sign. Actually, <laughs> Ahaz had already decided that he was going to put his trust in the king of Assyria, a strong power which might have defeated the two allies. But God brushes aside his objection and gives a sign nonetheless as a way of showing his faithfulness and his love for his people. And the sign is a promise that will come to fulfillment in time when a virgin will give birth to a son whose name will be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Naturally, our Catholic tradition interpreted this promise by God as being fulfilled by Mary at the Annunciation. She is the virgin who trusted what God was promising through an angel and believed it would happen. This is what her cousin Elizabeth proclaimed when she met her at the visitation. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And with her yes, Christ is born and became known as Emmanuel, God with us. 
And this woman of faith invites us to trust as she trusted in what the Lord has promised you and I that will be fulfilled, that will come to pass, that will be realized. And what then is it that God promises us in Christ? That Jesus will never abandon us, will always be there for us, no matter how absent he seems, no matter how far away, no matter how we stray or how faithless we become, God will always be present. Now let's look at the second panel that flanks the gospel, the passage from Revelation. The very first two verses, we hear that the Ark of the Covenant is back where it belongs. But it's not in the temple in Jerusalem, but it's in the heavenly temple. But here's the difference. It's no longer associated with Israel, but with a woman who is about to give birth. How come? Because the early church saw Mary, the mother of Jesus, as the new ark. Why? because she carried within her in a most vivid way, not just the remnant of the Ten Commandments, but she carried within her the very personal presence of God. Notice something too. The new ark, Mary, like the old ark, is associated with battle. As she is about to give birth, a terrible dragon confronts her. Now, this is not a sentimental image at all. This is a pretty hard-edged image. Here's a woman associated with the Ark of the Covenant. She's the bearer within of the divine presence. But from the moment she's about to give birth, she's confronted by a terrible enemy. This fearsome dragon, I mean, just imagine this, with seven heads, and horns, and crowns, and so on. Imagine if you're a father of a child and your wife is about to give birth, and outside this hospital room is this terrible beast. I mean, that's the image we're meant to have. But this dragon is powerless against this mother and child. This little baby and her mother are stronger than any of the forces of evil. So what's the point? Mary, the new ark, is more effective in battle than the old ark was for ancient Israel. She has become a refuge for all who are seeking strength in the face of evil, in the face of fear, in the face of any tribulation or trial. She is more powerful than any horrible problem which distresses us or imprisons us. Finally, we come to the central panel, the Gospel of John, with Mary, the mother of God, standing underneath, underneath the cross, witnessing the cruel death of her son, Jesus. And just before he dies, Jesus gives his mother to us symbolized by the beloved disciple whom Jesus loves. He entrusts her to us in order to help us when we are overcome by the terrifying trials of life. And through Mary's compassionate presence at the cross, the suffering that continues to play itself out in our lives becomes more deeply human. We're encouraged by this beautiful gesture of Jesus to allow Mary's compassionate heart to embrace us, for she promises us serenity, security, surrender, confidence, newness, another chance, life. And how do we do this? by taking Mary 
into our homes. And what that means spiritually is taking Mary into our lives, allowing her to be our companion and our counselor, aware that she knows better than we do what God wishes for us. If we learn to converse with Mary and listen to all her in all things, she will become our teacher in the ways of God, guiding our inner lives without the din of words. This is not some abstract possibility. This is real fact experienced today as in the past by numerous persons. Listen to one person's testimony. For some time now, I have had the desire to give Mary more space in my life. I like to invite her prayer. With great trust, I offer myself to her as a place where she can come to live again on earth. Therefore, I think I must become a space, a vessel awaiting God with my heart and mind fixed on Mary. Now, I think it's important to emphasize that this kind of life with Mary is not the only and necessary way for us to grow in holiness, because the Holy Spirit who guides souls along this beautiful path guides others through other means. For example, through the Bible, God's written word read with the Holy Spirit in Lexio Divina. I can only thank the Holy Spirit for guiding me this way and allowing me to have Mary as my companion and to see it as my mission as a redemptorist to encourage and invite others to take Mary into their lives. In his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, Pope Francis tells us that when we find something that is good or beautiful or compelling, like a piece of art or a book or a movie or a person, we shouldn't keep them to ourselves. Rather, we should be filled with a missionary fervor that wants to share this goodness, this beauty. This is the one of the ways that Francis says we cultivate joy, bathing people as it was or were in those things that are suggestive of God. For whatever is beautiful, whatever is good, whatever is true reflects God. Of course, this application or exhortation applies most especially to our experience of the risen Christ. We want as missionaries with reckless abandon to give this supremely good news away. But it can also be applied to the icon of our mother of perpetual help. Filled with a missionary fervor to share it, the Redemptress and their associates like the Perpetual Help Center in New York decided to make the icon a missionary, a painted gospel, proclaiming through its colors, its symbols, and its figures, the abundance of God's redemption. We have come to see this icon as a means of adequately responding to people's thirst for God. We believe that our mother's quiet maternal warmth is the easiest and the most non-threatening road back to the spirituality that people are seeking. In this modern wasteland, our mother of perpetual help is an oasis of fresh water that offers healing and liberation and fills us with life and peace. In this flattened landscape that tries to shut out every vestige of heaven, she is the gate that opens us to God. Her only calling is to fill us with Jesus. She points to Jesus, never to herself, as the icon so beautifully portrays. 
For over 150 years in the five continents of the world, we have preached about her on our missions. We have sung songs in her honor. We have carried her in processions and enshrined her in countless parishes where she was once unknown. And not to mention the countless people who have taken that icon into their homes in order to make a space for her in their hearts. All this explains her presence in so many churches and homes in 78 countries throughout the world, in splendid basilicas, sanctuaries, shrines, simple churches, and welcome centers erected in her honor. She is truly, truly, she is a global Madonna because popular devotion has made her so. Everywhere in the world, people are adopting her as their perpetual help. Over to my left here on the altar, underneath the icon of our mother perpetual help are inscribed the words, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. It refers to what Mary, our mother perpetual help, is for all believers who come to know her and love her. She is our life, a sign given to us to make her known throughout the world in order that the world might come to know the living presence of God among us. Regardless of the signs of the times, she invites us to trust that no matter what, God is always with us. She is our sweetness, whose compassionate gaze gives us the courage to face life's sufferings, certain in her secure embrace of divine providence. And she is our hope, the new ark that we continue to carry in procession, both to celebrate her as a mother whom we honor and to face the world of darkness, a world whose power can only be overcome with love. Let me conclude by quoting to you some lines from my favorite poem about Mary, written by Carol Hauslander, entitled, The Reed of God. Mary has laid love in his cradle, answering, answering for, for us all, be it done unto me. The child in the wooden bed, the light in the dark house, the life in the failing soul, the host in the priest hands, the seed in the hard earth, the spring in the thirsty heart. Mary, mother of God, we are the poor soil and the dry dust. We are hard with cold frost. Be warmth to this world. Be the thaw. Warm the cold frost. Be the thaw that melts so that the tender shoot of Christ flower to a spring in us. Rejoicing with Mary for the goodness of God, we bring our prayers and needs to our Heavenly Father with confidence. Our response today is hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. That our mother of perpetual help, who welcomes the word of God, will show us how to be bearers of the good news to everyone. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help, whose image is bathed in golden light, will help us to see that our lives and our world are permeated by God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help, in whose arms Jesus finds refuge, will make the church a place where the lost and abandoned of our world may find welcome and comfort. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help, whose hands cradle the word made flesh, will help us to spend ourselves in the service of the coming of the reign of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help will teach us teach to, to ponder the word in our heart and to do what your son asks us to do. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help, whose gaze looks beyond us into the future glory of God's reign, will encourage us to be voices of hope and builders of the future. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that our mother of perpetual help, whose image shines with the colors of the spectrum, a rainbow of peace between heaven and earth, will help us to be bridges of reconciliation among peoples and between humans and God. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother, that we, her loving children, will continue to make Mary known through the icon of our mother of perpetual help and to be missionaries of the good, beautiful, and joyful life of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Father, we thank you for the gift of our mother of perpetual help. Open our hearts and minds to the many blessings you offer and give us joy in following your son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray now, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your gift for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, through your kindness and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin and Mother Mary, may this offering redound to our present and eternal prosperity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. We especially praise you and proclaim your glory as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. She received your word in the purity of her heart, and conceiving in her virgin womb, gave birth to our Savior, and so nurtured the church at its very beginning. She accepted God's parting gift of love as she stood beneath the cross and so became the mother of all those who are brought to life through the death of her only son. She joined her prayers with those of the apostles as together they awaited the coming of your spirit and so became the perfect pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she cares for the pilgrim church with a mother's love following its progress homeward until the day of the Lord dawns in splendor. Now with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by this same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our bishop, and his assistant bishops, Bishop Bruce here present, and the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, For the kingdom power, power, and power, and glory, glory and yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We beseech you, O Lord, may the glorious intercession of your Immaculate Mother and Ever-Virgin Mary help free us from all dangers and by her goodness bring together in love those upon whom she showered her never-failing blessings, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In many churches, you'll find that the floor is worn out in front of the shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Wherever she makes her, her home, wherever she's been enthroned in whatever church, you'll notice the floor. It could be marble or wood or carpet. Uh, the marble has a dip in it. The wood, the varnish is gone and the carpet becomes bare thread because thousands upon thousands of people for generations now have gone to her for help that never fails. And even if the very floor in front of her should wear out, Mary never tires or wears out. She's never tired of hearing our pleas for help, our calls to her, very grateful for the Redemptorists. It's so good to be a Redemptorist, to have a mother always ready to help us. And in a special way, the Redemptorists who made this celebration possible. Someone who never tires of preaching about, talking about. Our mother of perpetual help is Father Philip Dabney, who gave the homily today. Beautiful. And so thank you, Father Dabney. And Thanks to all of those from the Provincial House who made this celebration so beautiful. And thanks too to the staff of the Basilica here. We're very grateful for your accommodations, all that you've made possible for this wonderful celebration of 75 years. 75 years. Let's see what happens in the next 75. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for a blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly reward. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go for Mass is ended.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us recite together the prayer to our Mother of Perpetual Help. O Mother of Perpetual Help, icon of love, your sorrowful gaze at our suffering and that of Jesus entrusts us to the love of the Father. Help us to make you known even more and to be missionaries of the good, beautiful, and joyful life of the gospel. Open our hearts to the cry of those without hope until all come to believe. Teach us to ponder the word in our heart and to do what your Son asks us to do. Enable us to walk with you with the great light of faith to light our path. Thus, one day, we will be able to contemplate with you the face of the Father, who with the Son and Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.